Hey everyone, this is Aaron Ashley Simon and welcome to another episode of Real Gems. Today's a special day because I'm doing a solo episode. Yes, you heard that right. I hope you enjoy because we're going to be diving into the world of content creators and podcasts. Live streamers and content creators are making more efforts to start podcasts. At this point, your favorite creator, your favorite creative streamer, gaming content creator either has a podcast or has been on one or is seriously getting themselves behind the mic in a different way. The landscape for content is drastically changing and has been within the last three years due to the pandemic. It's created a boom for live streaming content. Like since then, it's pretty much been dying down and it's been making way for other kinds of long form content like podcasts to become the dominant long form piece of content for platforms. Also, I've been enjoying some podcasts as well. Various different people can connect with podcasts in different ways. If I'm doing a long drive, I love listening to podcasts like Oscar Cerista's, I listen to Lore as well as Radiolab. And there's pleasure in listening to podcasts as well as doing them. It creates a platform for creatives to show a different side of themselves, like Pokimane and what she's doing. She has a new podcast out called Don't Tell Anyone, and it's just one of the growing lists of streamer-run shows that we'll be seeing more in the future. So why is that? Well, because the numbers behind live streaming are not what they used to be, and also brands are moving away from live streaming because it's an environment that is harder for them to control when it comes to brand safety and brand risks. But regardless, streamers need to diversify their content, and that's been a constant part of the evolution of being a content creator. The major advice that has been largely said is discoverable content. Make discoverable content on other platforms like YouTube and IG and TikTok and so forth. So why are we seeing this shift to podcasts and different kinds of long form content? Well, that's because the numbers behind live streaming are not what they used to be. Streamers need to diversify their content and that's been a constant part of the evolution of being a content creator. The major advice that they've gotten is make more discoverable content on YouTube and TikTok and IG and whatever other platforms that works to the works to what they need. The problem is, is that the more dedicated streamers have basically largely run into is that by doing these live streaming, it takes up and eats up a lot of their time being live. This ultimately eats their revenue. If they haven't perfected the YouTube game or built teams to help them make content on a consistent basis, the trade-off doesn't make sense for some of the top creators who have benefited from marathon-like approach to streaming. But the attitude has since changed, especially with the times. I mean, now it's so rare to find a streamer that solely just focuses in on streaming just to make money. And two things have largely sped up that process. One, Twitch, the market leader in the live stream space, has seen viewership declining over the past years and have, has made big changes to its revenue splits. There's also been a perceived decline in exclusivity deals, especially with Twitch now allowing co-streaming to its competitors like YouTube, Kick, and TikTok. I mean, look, Twitch viewership have declined almost 10% in the past years as rivals are coming up. The discoverability on these platforms are making it very hard for other people to come into this new environment, unless they're doing something totally different or eccentric and wild and just out outside the box. The rise in the podcast content across the internet is, we're seeing the rise in the podcast content world across the internet because short form is helping to push that. Yes, short form may be leading the pack in terms of content that you're gonna see more consistently, but long form is how you build brand affinity and how your fans become loyal to you and adore you. And you're not gonna be able to escape podcasts today. I know some people are, are like, oh my God, anyone can make a podcast. We're seeing all these podcast bros out here. I get it. But we're seeing a lot more podcasts because there's a lot of versatility that comes to this kind of content form. Not only do you get video, but you also get audio only content. And with the long form video, you can have it be a standalone, but then you can also take short form content from it as a whole, segmenting it for YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn, or whatever platform you prefer. Also, the subject matter around podcasts is so fast. If you think of a topic, you probably can find a podcast for it. And if there isn't one, you can absolutely make one yourself. Compared to other kinds of content forms, they are easier to get up and start running. And you just need a mic, internet, and something to say. And it's a great thing, right? I mean, look, I have been starting, I started my podcast at the top of this year, Real Gems with Aaron, and it's been a great way for me to show myself in a different light. Many people know me as a broadcaster in the gaming space, but I've been able to take a platform and talk about other things with 
the relationships I have in the industry. It allows me to show the network value that I have. It allows me to create consistent content that fits with my brand. And it also allows me to talk about whatever I want to talk about, where I feel like I'm typically pigeonholed in other areas. My podcast allows me to truly be myself and share whatever I want to share in a controlled environment. And I'm not the only one who's enjoying the podcast world. According to Riverside, as of 2022, um, this is a study by Infinite Dial. 62% of Americans will have listened to a podcast ever in their lives. There's an estimate of 177 million Americans and an increase from 57%, the percentage of the same statistics that was in 2021. 38% of Americans listened to a podcast in the last month and 26 in the last week. Also, there are large numbers considering that, you know, estimates that only around 424 million people are podcast listeners wide. So that's a big, big demographic. And it even dives a little bit further into who are actually listening to podcasts. 50% of monthly U.S. podcast listeners are aged between 12 and 34. 43% between 35 and 54 years old and 22 are aged over 55. This is actually a great way for you to get a younger demographic. I've noticed through my podcast that yes, even though my audience typically scales to towards being millennials, which of course I'm a millen I'm a millennial myself, um, it's also been targeting a lot of younger individuals as well. I feel like when it comes to content, podcasts are one of the best ways to target a wider range of a demographic uh, you, in gaming, right? Typically certain gaming content will be hyper focusing on a younger demographic. Podcasts are one of the very few content that you can hit across the board. You can have an audience member who is 15 years old and you can have an audience member that is 55 years old. That it's very hard and rare to do with having such a vast audience group. Also, you can increase things internationally, um, domestically and, and so forth. But that's also because people who listen to podcasts actually listen to it very frequently. 26% of Americans who listen to podcasts in the last week listen to an average of eight podcasts throughout the week. In 2019, a report revealed that 22% of podcast fans listen to over 22 hours of podcasts a week. The same report revealed that 35% listen to more than 10 different shows per month. That just shows you that there's a seat at the table for everyone in the podcast world. I mean, that's crazy how there's more than 400 million podcast listeners who are tuning into the content and how there are over 2 million independent podcasts with tens of millions of episodes. And so you do have the ability to gain an audience. Now, I know people are always like, oh, oversaturation. Everyone's trying to be, become a creator. Yes, the creator economy is changing and evolving and it's becoming a profession that more people are respecting. So you're going to see more people who are going to get into the space because of technolo technology and tools that have made it easier. We also are having conversations about how AI mechanics and tools and machine learning may help with that progress. But it doesn't mean that the best won't go to the top. Now, granted, there are going to be some problematic podcasts and content that do rise to the top, like in any content form. But also the cream always rises to the top. And also it's interesting that how podcasts are more popular in the United States, it, which lays claim to the most podcast listeners in the world, over a hundred million. That means you have a wider audience that you can appeal towards, right? And it goes back to what I said. If you start as a specific creator, whether it's a comedian or a gamer, you're going to have a specific demographic, but a podcast will allow you to tap into areas and spaces that you have not before. So how are current content different from podcasts? If you're familiar with live streaming, you may already be thinking, well, how is this so different from podcasts? Because I feel like podcasts do have that live component, very similar to live streaming. And don't they already kind of have their own podcast with their own streams? Well, mm, yes and no. A big part of streaming is expressing your thoughts over a course of a long period, but the direct real time engagement is the most important part when it comes to you uh, live streaming towards an audience and it brings a nuance to the situation that you typically don't get when it comes to certain content pieces that are typically uh, taped to live, which is you record it and then you make it go live. They're taking questions, they're interacting with chat and building all these elements together in a very cohesive manner. Not to mention the performance part, right? Of being on camera, being live, being energetic when you have people watching you for hours upon hours. 
It's a thought that Pokimane expressed in the beginning of her podcast, saying, it's hard to discuss these things on stream, referring to past experiences in her career as a streamer. Whether it's not the right audience or when you're live streaming, you're at risk of being clipped out of context. There's this pressure of people responding. There, this immediate feedback loop of what people think about what you're saying right now, even before you finish a coherent thought. I mean, honestly, Pokimane, I'm sorry that you went through that, but I have to say, no matter what, you're gonna, always gonna get clipped out of context. That's just the internet and that's just social media. But she's right. In podcasts, you're able to control your narrative and control your thoughts a lot better than you maybe can in a live stream. And I understand that completely. I used to do podcasts before this podcast I have on my own and we've had live stream moments. We've had moments where even when we had an, an important thought or we had an argument, that was backed up by facts, backed up by substantial feelings and sentiments, people are gonna still get upset and people are gonna still take it out of context. People don't always like hearing other opinions because it sometimes will go against what they believe in or maybe they project their own feelings and thoughts onto this, you know, whoever's speaking because that's just how social media and life is. But I do agree on the fact that you are able to develop your thoughts in a more thorough way and plan for your thoughts in a more thorough way. And if there's something that you don't like or maybe the context you're adding to the conversation, you could have done a better job, you can always record it. That's the benefit of a podcast versus a live stream. Now, for those who are newer to Twitch streamers and this whole world, they are not strangers to podcasts. Many have done podcasts before, just not in the form that you all traditionally have seen. Streamers usually have gotten together in Discord calls from separate locations all around the world, all around the country, with multiple streamers gathering to speak on topics. These makeshift podcasts have stepped up and have been working well, especially during the pandemic. It has given streamers different things to do besides just playing video games, but they're still featured on that whole concept of where live performance that we spoke about previously. Biggest streamers, Trainwreck, has his own podcast called Scuffed Podcast, and it's been one of the most popular ones done in the style that I described previously. Usually it's categorized by having multiple Twitch and YouTube streamers that are brought together and they're speaking over Discord rather than a consistent cast of hosts with different guests. Now, this one's very interesting because I personally believe that when you do a podcast, yes, there is a live component to it in the sense of you can have your thoughts come in real time. But I also think it's best to produce it as a show. I think sometimes people think that podcasts are very easy in the sense that you just go and record. And yes, in some instances it is, but it's a show. There are important elements of production, pre-production, planning that goes into making sure that you put out the best product that you can. So I think that it's great that you can see these live streamers are able to have these live moments in the podcast. I still believe that having the pre-production planning process is the best way to make your podcast be effective and include context versus just having a bunch of people just screaming and yelling at each other which can happen. So this kind of collaborative content in general has always been part of the live streaming communities, but what has changed is the scale of these types of events and content. Games like Among Us were very strong during the pandemic. Games like Among Us were strong during the pandemic time and streamers like Ludwig, Heisa Not, and others have been consistently pushing the envelope when it comes to live streaming and also utilizing these games for content purposes. Bringing streamers into IRL or into different situations like award shows, game shows, events, and more has become a big part of them differentiating has become a bigger part of how they differentiate their content. So it's not a surprise that upping the quality of their podcast to reach higher standards has become a big part of the live streaming world. And they now have sets, they have better audio, better video equipment, lighting, producers, and more to add better production values to their shows. And this is very much in line with the rest of the podcast world that we're seeing that has been constantly trying to find ways to differentiate themselves in a crowded market. But it goes back to the overall concept, it's start with what you have. And that's one of the best value points that you can take away from live streamers. They typically will start with whatever equipment they have. They will live stream and start with what they have and build upon it. 
That's what we're going to see with some of the best podcasts. They may start with simple concepts, but they will evolve into their own shows and their own, own concepts over time. Even though we've seen the decline of sponsorships and partnerships in the podcast space, one perfect example is that Spotify lost $1 billion betting on the podcast world, and they can they essentially view that as a fail. But I don't. I think that the podcast world is just getting started and it is growing. And the way that people are consuming it is not just in audio form. And I think that's where Spotify messed up. If you see some of the biggest TikTok platforms are podcasts themselves. Some of the best YouTube channels are podcast-esque shows. Some of the most clipped out moments on Twitter are podcasts. So I think where a lot of people have failed to recognize is podcasts are not just consumed in audio form. It's consumed in every content form possible, making it easier for people to find your podcast and to listen to it anywhere, everywhere, and at any time. And with that, I hope you all continue to listen to Real Gems with Aaron, not only with guests, but also my solo episodes as well. Let me know what your thoughts are and if you enjoyed this unique special solo episode. Make sure you give that sub, give that like, and I cannot wait to talk more about the life and journey of a creator and the pivots that we all make. Once again, my name is Aaron Ashley Simon, and I'll see you all in the next episode.